this is Bill from Mission Veterinary Clinic and today I would like to talk to you about some of the equipment within the hospital and how we track our maintenance and repairs and purchases and even issues we're having with that equipment which is probably the most important part. Now what we do is every time we purchase a piece of equipment, a computer, a printer, a microscope, lab, x-ray, doesn't matter what it is, we enter it into Cornerstone as a patient and create a uni unique patient ID for that piece of equipment. Sometimes we actually even give it dual ownership. So if you look into client ID and I look up Mission Vet Equipment, you will find all the equipment listed or you should find all the equipment listed as patients here okay some of these equipments equipment has dual ownership and the reason is we've listed them as mission but we've also listed it under the manufacturer as well so i'm going to go back up here to autoclave and use that as my example for what we do and we have not been using this properly, which is why I'm making the video. So hopefully the employees watch this and we all start being a little bit better about how we um, track our repairs and such. So under autoclave, if I double click on autoclave, you will see that the autoclave is 50% listed as Midmark and 50% listed as Mission Vet. And the reason for that is if I wanted to, I can simply go to Midmark and see all my Midmark equipment as well, but have their phone number and address and everything will be right here. Okay, so let's go back down to the autoclave, oh, past it. Now, when the autoclave comes in, first thing we're gonna do is enter it into the computer as a patient. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that patient ID and we're gonna go create a label with the P-Touch label maker and we are gonna put it on the autoclave. Now I don't have a picture of the autoclave here. I'm gonna use the ultrasonic cleaner. And as you can see, every piece of equipment in the hospital has a label like this showing its unique patient ID. I have an ultrasonic cleaner there. Oh, here's the autoclave, okay. There's the autoclave right there um, with its unique patient ID. So I can always look it up. It's important that every piece of equipment has its own unique patient ID. Um, if you notice, we had multiple IV pumps. Well, you want every IV pump to have its own patient label. That way, if one is messing up, you know exactly which one it is. Because maybe it threw an error, but it's a one-time thing. But when you're open 24 hours, you got so many employees. If, if it's not communicating, by the time it gets to the manager, we might be having an issue with multiple IV pumps or one IV pump. By logging it, he can go look at the IV pumps and tell exactly which pumps are having issues and which are not. I hope that makes sense. So go back. When the autoclave comes in, the first thing we want to do is scan the receipt and attach it to the file. Okay. And you do that by going to correspondence, all correspondence. Okay, and we're, I'm just going to create a supervisor note. It really doesn't matter what note it is. I'm going to come down here to attachments, new file. I'm going to go find the purchase receipt, which I've already prepared in downloads, and I'm going to attach it. Click OK. And then I'm going to come here to HX description, and I believe in always giving these notes a custom HX description. And it's just going to be purchase R E C E I I P T that's about right I think so um, purchase re receipt and maybe the date I purchased it maybe not purchase re receipt autoclave should be obvious okay and click OK the next thing I'm going to do is read the oh, and save it click OK I'm going to delete this later so I left it as tentative and you can see I've been in here playing. So the next thing I'm going to do is go create another custom receipt. Okay. Or sorry. Next thing I'm going to do is go create another 
correspondence note. And this one is going to be the maintenance record. Now I can do one of two things. I already know where the maintenance record is. I could just simply go, or the maintenance, maintenance plan, I guess I should call it, um, to the desktop, downloads, here we go, maintenance checklist. Now I could simply copy and paste this in. if I wanted, control V, or I could make it an attachment, or I could do both, okay? Once I've done that, then I need to look and see when is the next maintenance due. Monthly, okay, so I'm gonna save this, and now I'm gonna create a callback for whoever is responsible for the maintenance on this item. So I'm gonna to go to callback and, oops, sorry, click okay. I'm gonna to go to callbacks. And I'm going to create it for one year or one month from today. Today's September 3rd, so October 3rd. And for whoever I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it for myself. And click perform monthly maintenance on autoclave. Simple as that. Now I've created a callback telling me when to do the monthly maintenance on the autoclave. So it's made it real simple. When I do the maintenance, I will create a note showing the maintenance was done. Okay, and it may be something as simple as here I can see Andy did the maintenance. Um, Tuesday, July 4th, 2023, change sealant. Next time to change is December 2023. Did not have filters to change, but they need to be changed. Complete weekly maintenance. Now, at this point, what Dan Andy should have done, and maybe he did, is create a callback for Danny saying, I need you to order filters for the, the autoclave so we can change them. Okay, if there was something he wasn't accustomed to or issues, he could have taken pictures of it and attached it. He could have taken a video of it and attached it. Say something like changing the bulb on the microscope. We only have to do that once every two years. So every time it happens, it's so simple to change, but nobody knows how to do it. Well, the next time we change it, we should take a little video of someone changing it, attach it, so when the microscope bulb goes out, you can watch the video and go, oh, that's really easy to do, I can do that. Maybe even create a note on where the microscope bulbs are kept in the hospital. And then when you do change it, you wanna create a callback for Danny or whoever's doing the purchasing that you use the bulb and please order more bulbs. That way we never run out. Um, that's about it. And you can go in here and I can see, you know, we have an account for IDEX. We have an account for IDEX. There we go. The, the lab machines right there. And all of these are half owned by IDEX and half listed as Mission Vet. Um, you could go under Watt Appliance. And you can see our washer and dryer there because they constantly need maintenance. But this way, every time there's an issue, something throws an error, something's not working, you should log it, find the patient, and make a note. No different than the patients in the hospital. If you don't write it down, it didn't happen. Okay? There's no way that the management can know things are breaking or having issues unless you log it. Now, when you do make logs of things breaking or not working properly, please include who, what, where, why, and how. Be as detailed as possible. Take pictures if you can. Take a video if you can. Please avoid using pronouns like he, she, it, 
I don't want to make any assumptions. I want to know exactly who it is. I want to know exactly what happened. That way, when we call the manufacturer and try and troubleshoot it, we have the most information available to us. Okay, I hope this video helps. Um, I need everyone, management, staff, assistants, to please start documenting this stuff. And every time there's an issue with the machine, make a log. Let's get uh, maintenance schedules going on a lot of our equipment and do a better job with maintenance on the equipment so uh, things aren't breaking. Thank you very much. Have a good day.